So I have just a few observations to make. And I'm going to make most of my observations today um, with a few specific uh, points of view. One is, a, a since this is something that we're talking about GTLDs, and we're going to focus on GTLDs. Um, and since there's been some discussion about the internationalizing, the you know, creating multilingual uh, domain space, I'll, I'll have a little bit to say about that. Um, and probably more of my comments are going to be in the um, <coughs> technical area than in, in a um, only policy area. So I'd like to uh, say this to, to Wendy. Um, you know, I heard Wendy talk about thin networks, and I, I think that's a very good idea. So long as a thin network and a process um, that continues such a thin network is congruent with a stable core. And when I hear suggestions and when I hear um, uh, comments that um, say, let us underspecify how new TLDs should go in, because we can experiment, we can put them in, and then we can figure out what goes wrong and then take them down. Um, the caution flag that goes up for me is, you do real, you do real harm. When you put a TLD in, and then you decide some, somewhere down the road, let's take it down. You know, there are real users who, who get affected, people who truly have um, content and um, uh, expressions um, that, that get affected. So what I'd like to suggest is that when we talk about a, a thin process, uh, a thin network, that we also uh, keep in mind that it has to be done in a way that is congruent with a stable core. Now, the core ought to be pretty thin, and some of the earlier principles that have uh, been espoused talk about um, you know, trying to keep as much of the innovation on the edges and keeping the core pretty stable and, and frankly, pretty boring. And that's not such a bad goal to continue to, to keep uh, adhering to. Having said that, I think IDNs have uh, assisted in removing some of the boredom from the core. Um, <laughs> we've, um, you know, I, I've heard various proposals to continue the, the old legacy of you know, CCTLDs are, are always two characters in length, and therefore, somehow, IDN and CCTLDs, such as it is, should also be two characters in length, or even though there are probably cases where you can represent an entire <coughs> territory in one character, and don't know what to do with the other character that's now free for you. Uh, or in other cases, you have territories where, um, you know, the artificial truncation to two characters causes some amusing results. I'll use uh, my, my own country of origin, for example, in Bharat, B-H-A-R-A-T, is, uh, is the Hindi representation of India. Um, if you take Bhar, B-H-A-R, um, that has meaning. That means burden. If you take Bhat, B-H-A-T, that too has meaning. That's rice. I don't think India really would like to be abbreviated to either a burden or rice <laughs> when it comes to you know, an IDN TV representation. And there are those who say it's merely semantics, it's just a mapping, just take whatever is represented. You know, nobody ever said initially dot IN was supposed to be India. People would figure out that, that burden or dot bar is actually India, and people would figure out that India is burden. But, you know, I don't think that's necessarily an appropriate place to go because the legacy of a two-character restriction uh, doesn't actually translate well into a multilingual world. And the, the technical reasons for a two-character limitation, um, I, I, I fail to find many technical reasons. I find many convenience reasons uh, reasons of legacy and history, um, but this is something 
this is for example for example an area where um, we ought to actually build a new mindset about what is uh, an ID and CCTLD. I'll state a concern that many GTLD, uh, existing GTLD registries have. Uh, it's a concern that has been um, stated at least two different ways. I will state both the ways um, for, for completeness and then I will state the, the, the way that I actually think is the right way or a good way forward. Um, and this is not just a GTLD issue. This is something that works for all TLDs that are currently represented in the ASCII repertoire. Um, there, is a, uh, there is a GTLD registry that is on record that has said that their representation of a name in, uh, that is currently in, in ASCII.travel, they have stated that they believe that as a result of having been being the registry operator for dot travel, they ought to be um, the rightful home for dot voyage, V O Y A G E, which you know you could also pronounce it uh, voyage. Um, now there is another, so so that is a semantic representation or a semantic equivalency argument. Um, there is another point of view point of view that says. We have a, a TLD, um, let's say it is .info, let's say it's .de or .sa. And the concern is that a representation of, in, in some other script that looks similar to INFO or DE or SA, not sound similar, but looks similar, can cause real harm. You can imagine any number of phishing and other um, spurious websites that can come up that, to the unaided eye, look exactly the same as a TLD that is popularly accepted to be a trustworthy TLD. And this is not a GTLD issue. This is just a pure ASCII uh, TLD issue. And it, it, it cuts equally across GTLDs <coughs> and CCTLDs. I think caution has to be exercised here. Um, it is, I, I very strongly endorse um, freedom of expression. That's a very good thing, but, but I think we have to balance some of those with ensuring that um, there is not intentional confusion that is introduced into the domain name system by the introduction of domain of top level labels that look virtually identical, look similar to an existing TLD, be it a GTLD or a CCTLD, real harm can be done and will be done. Um, I think if we take some of these core principles, which I, in my opinion, do not make for a fat network, continue to uh, enhance stability at the core. If you take some of these principles, and, and I certainly don't claim that these are the only principles that should be there. I think uh, there is a large community of uh, uh, active minds that can contribute uh, to, to more um, strong principles that have real harm, real technical and uh, resolution and universal um, resolution issues that come through. You can actually define them, you can show what the harm is, and then you, I think once we define those areas, those ought to be marked, do not go there. And if you, once you leave those out, then you have, I think, a wide area that you can feed that as a community, we can feel free to experiment, innovate, uh, and introduce TLDs in without worrying about the ill effects of a poorly considered and hastily introduced um, uh, mechanism 